Energy powers our lives, but our historic energy choices have been to the detriment of our economic, social and environmental systems in oil importing small island states as ours. In fact, climate change, which is the darkest side of fossil fuel use, is the single largest threat to our Caribbean community and our livelihoods. The CARICOM Secretariat, through its energy program, is working with member states, regional institutions and other strategic partners to accelerate the transition towards a more sustainable and secure energy future for our Caribbean community. The energy program spearheaded the development of the CARICOM Energy Policy, which was approved in 2013 by CARICOM Energy Ministers. The purpose of the energy unit when it started was to really drive the development of the policy. And since the development of the policy, there was a view that we needed to also have a strategy. And so the Sustainable Energy Roadmap and Strategy was designed to implement the sustainable energy aspects of the policy. Um, and the unit was also responsible for doing that work. The policy and strategy have been identified by even the former UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon as being one of the most progressive regional policy and strategies um, for sustainable energy anywhere in the world. And so trying to ensure that those things that are healed as world leading can be actually implemented was important. And so the CICRI was established. CICRI, the Caribbean Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency, will support and coordinate the execution of renewable energy and energy efficiency projects and activities in the region. The role of CICRI is really transforming the energy landscape to one that is sustainable, climate resilient, affordable, improving the lives of our people. So we're going to be doing capacity development. We're going to be setting up a knowledge hub for our member states that they could access in making informed decisions. And we employ persons that will help us to drive those programs. Out of this work, the region and its people can take advantage of emerging opportunities. So we have a number of products, a number of facilities, mechanisms, one of which is called the Credit Risk Abatement Facility. Um, that will be uh, spearheaded by the CARICOM Development Fund. Um, we also have the Integrated Utility Services Model and we are also working in terms of a project preparation facility together with the SECRI uh, where they will look at helping project developers move their projects to what I will consider a bankable um, state and they can access funding internationally as well as the, from the private sector within the Caribbean region. These initiatives, specifically the Integrated Utility Service Model, have been well received across the region by stakeholders such as utility companies, as it provides an opportunity for them to become a key player within the emerging energy services paradigm. So Lightning Power recognizes that within the Barbados National Energy Policy, there is a huge component that promotes and encourages local participation in the renewable sector and for that we believe we can facilitate and play a role in ensuring that that happens. We are working currently with CARICOM on a model called the Integrated Utility Service Model or the IUS model and, and effectively what is, it does is that the utility coordinates a number of players to ensure that ordinary customers um, like myself for instance who want to make investments in renewable energy systems or energy efficiency um, initiatives can do so and the utility will advance the, the funds to allow you to do that and then you can make the payments back through your monthly electricity bill every month. So we're working with CARICOM to develop that and believe that within the next six to eight months, that is something that should be implemented and we can move forward with once we've been given regulatory approval to do so. Across the region, the transition and development of the renewable energy sector is clear as governments, utility companies and the private sector are taking action. If you were to look back over the last, I would say 10 years, I think one will have to conclude that the Caribbean has made significant progress. Um, certainly all the countries now have established clear targets and have um, done significant work in reforming their regulatory um, space as well as the legislative changes. But I think we have also seen quite a bit of investment 
in some of the bigger countries, Jamaica, Barbados, through their policy reform, have done significantly well in terms of the quantum of investment and in moving the amount of um, renewable energy uh, projects that have been employed. Jamaica is now operating with over 120 megawatts of renewable energy in its system through its investment in wind power and solar photovoltaic technology. In St. Vincent and the Grenadines, drilling has commenced for geothermal exploration. CARICOM has helped countries such as Montserrat to develop their national energy policy, which enabled them to attract funding for key sustainable energy projects. Electric mobility is a major part of the transformation moving forward. Megapower, a regional industry leader based out of Barbados, has elevated the sector through its sales, skills training and the advocacy of sustainable energy within the transportation sector. These are just a few examples of the work being done and CARICOM believes it too should lead by example. The Secretariat believes that we must do the things that we talk about and the things that we articulate in policy. As a matter of fact, by this time next year, if you were to do such an interview, I will be showing you 400 kilowatts of solar photovoltaic in the front lawns of the Secretariat headquarters in Georgetown, Ghana, which will be powering the Secretariat 100%. Um, you know, so we have been funded by the Japanese government through a grant aid, and we are very thankful for, to them, and that will allow the CARICOM Secretariat to be a net producer of, of energy, in fact, net carbon sink, in fact. So the Secretariat is intending to show that sustainable energy action can indeed be achieved through concerted partnerships and effort. I am excited, but it's more than just uh, a nice thought. It is based on what I've seen so far and the commitment of the countries to do the right thing. And I think there is now a great momentum that is being built up, um, driven largely by the climate change agenda, but also because the countries recognize that unless they diversify, unless they are able to have uh, the shift in terms of their dependency or the shift away from fossil fuels, then they are really vulnerable in this space. The same energy that we were depending on to give us the kind of economic advancements and the kind of social advancements, the same energy that allowed us to be able to cross the Atlantic in one day, um, is the same energy which could cause sea level rises, which could obl obliterate some populations because of how low they are relative to the sea level. Um, so, you know, it, it's that, that, that's the kind of double-edged sword. But all is not lost because as human beings, being creative as we are, recognize that um, this climate change issue was, uh, was something we needed to tackle. It resulted in innovation. Um, you, you know, humans are typically most creative during wartime and the climate change issue is a war. The Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SEDEMA, as the primary regional agency for managing disaster risks, many which are climate related, is a key partner. The biggest threat for us in, in the region from climate change is on the humanitarian consequences of it. But the greatest opportunity that climate change also presents for us is in the area of renewables. And in the area of renewable solutions, what we get is a potential for resilient infrastructure, but we also get opportunity to unlock tremendous amount of financial resources that are typically directed towards the purchase of fossil fuels. The name of the game, you know, you know, as far as we are concerned, is flexibility. How do we generate the right kind of system that gives us flexibility to adapt? Because adaptation to climate change is a must if we are to survive. Um, I think we are a, we're a living lab based on our experiences in the past and that being a living lab of unfortunate outcomes provides an opportunity for fortunate pathways going forward in terms of how we can, we can begin to um, retool our energy industry. Energy is one of the bigger polluters, so is transportation. And we are trying to find ways for persons to understand that. Um, it's important for them because they are vulnerable. We are all vulnerable to Mother Earth. And we have done a lot to take her off course. So it's very important for us 
to be a part of the solution to drive the transformation. And it's going to take every single person in the Caribbean to be a part of this work. As a region, we have come a long way. However, in this dynamic world, there are many challenges that we will continue to face. The CARICOM Energy Program, along with its partners, are committed to building a resilient region in which our people will prosper. To do this, we must continue to drive innovation, attract further investment, and promote the democratization of energy.